Hello everyone. Uh, so far I've only shown you games that Bent Larsen lost, uh, but uh, here is a very interesting game he played against Efim Geller. It was played in 1960, it was the, uh, the Nimsovich Memorial, uh, and I couldn't really find any information about this tournament uh, other than Bent Larsen and Efim Geller. I have no idea uh, who else played in this tournament. If any of you can find some sort of a link to this tournament, feel free to share it in the comments. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's really a great game uh, played by the Danish Grandmaster and it's a very ferocious attack uh, so quite enjoyable and uh, the person he's playing against is uh, the Soviet Grandmaster Efim Geller who was not only a world-class Grandmaster but also a coach to Boris Pasky and the later Anatoly Karpov so quite a guy uh, last game uh, you've seen uh, Bent Larsen play b3 against the Boris Pasky in this game, he ch uh, Larsen chooses the Hungarian opening, g3. Uh, we have d5, bishop to g2, and e5. Knight to f3, uh, knight to c6 by Geller, even though uh, e4 is perfectly fine for black. Uh, but uh, he decides to go for knight to c6. Uh, Larsen castles, we have knight to f6, c4, uh, d4, d3, bishop to d6, and knight to a3. Uh, going for knight to c2, rook b1, and expanding on the queen side. And uh, grabbing this knight uh, with the bishop doesn't really uh, give black anything. Uh, well, uh, he loses the bishop pair, and white uh, will simply get a free b file for his rook. Uh, so, Geller castles, we have rook to b1, continuing with his plan. Uh, rook to e8, now knight to c2, a5, preventing b4. Uh, but uh, first Larsen plays b3. You don't want to play uh, a move like a3 to prepare b4 because, well, a4 stops any hopes of b4 ever being played. So after a5, Larsen first plays b3. Uh, we have h6. Uh, now he plays a3, preparing b4. Uh, bishop to f5, and he pushes b4. Uh, a capture some b4, a capture some b4, and queen to d7. Preparing uh, ideas like bishop to h3, exchanging this light square bishop, and then, well, uh, probably attacking on the king side. Uh, b5, uh, Geller goes for knight to d8, and already Larsen created this beautiful pawn chain here. Uh, we have e3, uh, d captures on e3, uh, knight captures on e3, attacking that bishop, uh, and bishop to h7, keeping, keeping an eye on this d3 pawn. Uh, bishop to b2. Uh, we have c6, uh, trying to break break open that pawn chain, and our rook to a1, as this knight is blocking, uh, the rooks are not connected, so uh, Geller decides to capture the rook. Rook captures on a1, uh, queen captures on a1, uh, with an attack on this pawn on e5, uh, but the Geller first uh, plays uh, c captures on b5. Uh, we have knight captures on e5, with a tempo on the queen, and queen to c7. Uh, playing a move like bishop captures on e5 and bishop captures on e5, uh, you still can't undouble your pawns with c cap uh, b captures on c4 because your knight is attacked. Uh, white is still threatening bishop captures on f6. So after knight e5, uh, Geller decided to go for queen to c7. Uh, we have knight back to f3, uh, bishop to e7 now, and uh, rook to c1. Uh, b captures on c4, d captures on c4, uh, and we have queen to b6. Uh, knight to d5, attacking both queen and the bishop on e7, so knight captures on d5, uh, c captures on d5, and we have bishop to f8, as this g7 pawn was attacked. Uh, we have uh, bishop to d4, improving the position of this bishop uh, with a tempo on the queen, uh, queen to b3, and now knight to e5. And uh, Larsen's plan is pretty clear, uh, he wants to play knight to d7, uh, undermine this bishop on f8, and uh, then grab this g7 pawn. Uh, so we have b5 and knight to d7. And here there's really no way to protect the bishop because, uh, well, no, no piece can protect it. And, uh, well, probably the best uh, idea for black he here is to play a move like f6. Uh, but after knight captures on f8 and king captures on f8, uh, rook to c8, for example, uh, this would be extremely passive for black to play. Uh, but it, it would be playable, uh, better than better than what uh, Geller went for. So after knight to d7, uh, Geller tried bishop to e3, 
uh, now ga gaining a tempo on this rook on c1 and he thought well after white deals with this threat of, of me grabbing the rook uh, I'll deal with g7 after that uh, but Larson says uh, well you, you can have the rook and uh, he plays bishop captures on g7 and if you look at this position well capturing the rook on f1 isn't a particularly good move uh, but uh, it's the only move any other move loses instantly to, to knight uh, f6 check. So bishop captures on c1 is played, knight to f6 now, king captures on g7, and knight captures uh, rook on e8 with check. And, uh, well, uh, you definitely don't want to go to g8, because then queen to g7 would be checkmate. And if you play a move like king to g6, well, this is also uh, a, a very quick checkmate. Uh, for example, queen to g7 check. Uh, king to h5, now knight to f6, and this is checkmate. So after knight to e8 check, uh, this is a double check from the knight and the queen, uh, only move is uh, king to f8. <clears throat> now Larson plays uh, queen to h8 with check. And uh, okay, maybe bishop to g8 would be somewhat of a more resilient move, but uh, uh, king to e7 was played. Uh, we have d6, now with check, uh, knight is protecting pawn on d6, and, uh, well, uh, if you play something like king to e6, uh, you get uh, queen to f6 with check, king to d7, now queen to e7 with check, uh, king to c8, and queen to c7 checkmate. So after d6, uh, Geller played king to d7, uh, we have knight to f6 with check, uh, king to c8, uh, wherever the black king goes, uh, well, it's, it's not a really good position for black. So Geller decides at least he's going to try and protect this knight uh, on d8. Uh, but Larson goes for bishop to h3 check, uh, king to b7, and queen captures on d8. And, uh, well, there is no move uh, left for Geller to play. Uh, he has one more check, queen to d1 check, king to, d king to g2. And, uh, well, uh, this is completely resignable, but Geller tries uh, one more last-minute trickery. And he plays bishop to d3. Uh, the idea of bishop to d3 is a pretty pretty sneaky one. Uh, for example, if uh, if white were to blunder uh, with a slow move like uh, knight to d7, uh, then uh, Geller would uh, have checkmate in two moves with bishop to f1 check. Uh, queen is covering f3, king to g1, and bishop captures on h3 with checkmate. Uh, but Larson didn't play a great attack like this to blunder in the last minute. Uh, so after bishop to d3, bishop to c8 check was played, uh, king to a8, and now queen to a5 with check, and in this position f and Geller uh, resigned the game. Uh, because uh, what follows is king to b8, queen to c7 check, only move is king to a8, and now queen to b7 with checkmate. So there it is, uh, the first win by the Danish Grandmaster on my channel, uh, sorry it took so long, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, like I said, if you have any additional information on this 1960 Nimzovich memorial, uh, feel free to share it in the comments. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.